good. So, you know, if you need to warm up your mouth or anything, yeah. <laughs> <to exercise this. laughs> you're a pro at this though. So I don't need to tell you anything. This edition of Strata Originals podcast, if you are an entrepreneur, a business person, a corporate leader, you'll want to stick around. Today, we're talking to Ash Garg, who has written nine books and has a podcast called The Brand Called You, which is up around 2,500 episodes. We'll have all the information in the description below, but first, I'd like to welcome Ash. Thank you, Leanne. Delighted to be a part of your podcast. So we know each other. We've You've actually interviewed me. Uh, you interviewed Alan a few times. And at that point, I was really only aware of the brand called you. Mm. You have nine other books, which I've mm -hmm. just discovered. And your newest book is Seven mm. Chakras of Management Wisdom from Index Scriptures. When did you decide to write that? And it's it's really focused on business, right? Yeah, it is. So, you know, this is an interesting story uh, attached to it, uh, Leanne. When the pandemic started, someone sent me um, a link to a, an online program on Hinduism from the Harvard Divinity School. And I decided to enroll for it. And then I discovered that they, this was an eight-month program, which were covered the seven major religions of the world, which are Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. And the last four religions have really come out of India, which is why they are referred to as Indic, I-N-D-I-C religions. Right. So when I you know, went through that whole process, I said that there, is a, there are so many learnings. And most of us uh, in India have been educated, have been, uh, you know, have heard stories sitting uh, with our parents, with our mothers, uh, with, the, with our grandparents about scriptures. And I said that there is a huge relationship that we can draw mm -hmm. between our corporate lives and learnings from our scriptures. And that is how the whole process started of my wanting to uh, write about this. And, you know, we said that why don't we look at certain challenges that each one of us face? A simple little challenge like anger management. You know, all of us confront it, uh, you know, through our lives in the corporate world. And then when we try and relate it to what is mentioned about anger management from our uh, religious uh, figures and from our gods, you suddenly start to think that there's nothing wrong with anger management, with anger, as long as you're able to manage it well. Or something like diversity, equity, inclusion. Right. And, you know, this is something which the world has started talking about only in the last seven or eight years. And as I was reading our scriptures, I discovered that uh, diversity, equity, inclusion has been a part of our scriptures for over 7,000 years. So as we go along, as we talk more, maybe I'll tell you the little story related to uh, in inclusion and equity. But that's how it started. So it wow. took me about two and a half years to write the book. And then at what point did you really start to focus on um, it affecting like a business? So, you know, I've, I've spent my entire life as a business person, you know, uh, from the time I was 21 and a half years old in 1979 is when I when I started working for the corporate world, the first 17 years with uh, India Tobacco, which is a part of British American Tobacco. Then I ran two large American, I ran Asia for two large American aerospace companies. Then I became an entrepreneur. I joined the same organization that Alan belongs to, which is the YPO, and I've been a member for 31 years. So I said, you know, as someone who's been a business leader, someone who's been an entrepreneur, there are so many parallels that we can draw between our learnings. And therefore, I started picking up, you know, subjects that I have uh, been able to address. For example, something on gratitude, uh, something on promotions. Mm -hmm. Something upon on compensation, uh, something upon uh, uh, you know delegation. Um, so you know when I when I started picking up these, I said you know I picked up twenty nine such subjects, uh, and I said that each of these subjects relate to 
seven different parts of the human body uh you know and and uh, those of you those of you of your listeners who may have done uh, or maybe uh, interested in yoga will understand that there are seven nerve points in a human body and which is really at the top of your head and on your forehead in your throat heart and three more uh, uh, down the body and i said you know an organization or can also have the same seven nerve points which is you know the leadership at the top and so on mm-hmm. and i said let me start relating each of these uh, subjects that i picked up into buckets in these seven uh, nerve points and i drew lessons from all the different scriptures and so why don't we just okay the lessons from the different stri- scriptures and the most important one from what I understand from uh, the summary of your book is the root chakra. So is that the start of everything? Which, which chakra, sorry? The root chakra. The root, yeah. So root is, 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 is the bottom uh, of your uh, of your body. And it's the same thing. It's the large base of people that we have in organizations. Uh, you know, and, and but the point is that, you know, there is the root, which is called the Muladhar chakra. You've got the sacral chakra, which is just above, uh, you know, below your navel point. Then you've got your navel point, which is the solar, solar plexus chakra. You've got the heart chakra. You've got the throat chakra. Uh, you've got the third eye chakra. And you've got the crown, which is the top of your head. And you know, we can go into great details in all of them, but maybe that may be too much detail. So uh, you know, these are just the seven chakras. And uh, I found a very interesting correlation with uh, my own life in the corporate world. And how I could relate back to different steps in my life uh, as a corporate leader. And uh, the seven nerve points or se- seven energy points of, of every human body. How much did you learn as you went through that? Was I it- learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot. Because, you know, uh, I guess it's partly due to age. Uh, and I've, I've seen this with my friends across the world. As you get older, you want to learn a little more about who you are, um, what, uh, you know, we've all, or a lot of us have have some religious faith. I'm not saying all of us, because there are many people who are, uh, you know, who, who are atheists or agnostic to any religion. Mm-hmm. But I said, for people who do believe, uh, we all try to start to search for something uh, that we have grown up with, something that we have uh, been, been associated with people who are older. And now as I am getting into uh, an older generation, you know, I have now have a granddaughter, I suddenly want to be able to understand more about our scriptures. And that is how this whole process of learning started. And as I mentioned, once I've done, once I've done all this course, I started reading more about our, uh, our scriptures. And these scriptures are, you know, the Vedas. There are four Vedas. I spoke about, you know, wrote, uh, you know, read parts of the Upanishads, which are, uh, there are 108 of them. And these are all very, very long scriptures, but only 12 of them are important. You may have heard of the Gita uh, from where the word karma comes, you right. know. Uh, so a lot of the Western world does talk of karma, but karma really comes from uh, the Gita, which has got 700 verses. And it was uh, uh, a poem that was recited by one of our gods to a warrior. Uh, in the middle of the battle, right? So that's where the Gita comes from, and that's where the word karma comes. Where uh, Lord Krishna says to the the the, the 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 warrior, which is Arjun, that your job is to do your work. Don't worry about what the fruit of that work will be, right? And we use the work very often. This this is my karma. This is what I'm going to do in our work. Uh, so I read that. Then we have a very uh, we have two of the longest poems uh, or stories, which are both related to to God, which are the Ramayana and the Mahabharat. So I drew upon lessons from there, and finally, one of our most well known thinkers from 330 BC BCE, Chanakya. Um, you know, I drew. I, I read a lot of Chanakya and his thinkings on politics and on 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 economics. So these are the five six. Uh, texts that I used quite extensively in my book. And therefore, uh, there was a lot of learning. Sorry, long-winded answer to your question, but... Oh, that's okay. And and a self-journey too. 
because so as you as you relate it to uh, how it applies in your life and in business for mm -hmm. a corporation, it must have been a lot of uh, almost enlightenment. Correct. As you made these realizations. Correct. So, Correct. I, mean, I don't want to talk about everything in the book because obviously I want people to go on Amazon and buy it. Mm -hmm. But I just I was fascinated when when I read that it was I thought what a journey that must have been mm -hmm. uh, as you went through and wrote that. So, so let me then share another story about diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, you 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 heard of these you know this this big constellation in the sky, which is called the big the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, mm -hmm. it's a seven star constellation. In uh, in in our scriptures, the same constellation is referred to as the Saptarishis or the seven holy men. And in those seven stars, uh, these are all named after very very learned uh, holy men of, of of our scriptures. There is a twin star constellation. Uh, and there, those that twin star is named after one of the holy men and his wife. And what is interesting is, so we've had that for the last 7,000 years where women were included as a part of this. But what is even more interesting is that this twin star constellation revolves around each other. Unlike where we have, where the earth is there and the moon goes around the earth, these two stars move around each other. And even in today, in a lot of the more traditional Hindu weddings, after the wedding has been completed, the priest takes the young couple out and says, points to the sky and says, be like that star. You are both equal. You both will revolve around each other. There is no one who is more equal than the other. So, you know, these are all very interesting lessons. And there are I've got hundreds of lessons that I have drawn in my book. That is so much more romantic than the big deal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the seven holy men. Yes. I love it. I love it. That's a great story, Ash. Um, and so you didn't realize that that was the meaning of that then? Oh, well, I, I, I discovered this only two and a half years ago when I started reading about it. I didn't know that there was this story associated with it. Wow. It's, it's always amazing when you can not only share your learnings, but actually mm. go on a self-discovery journey as you Correct. write. Correct. It's a win-win. Absolutely. So let's skip over a little bit. I, I, I'd i love to. So I just want to remind people that, that you can buy Ash's book on Amazon and we'll have a link uh, in the description. Mm -hmm. I wanted to jump to the brand called you mm. because obviously, you know, that's been out for a while. What, I yeah. I'm not sure what year you wrote that, but it's it's been out for 10 years? About, yes, six, six seven years. Yes, I six, think. seven, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it it's really the sort of the personal brand journey Correct. that you go through with clients. So I'd love to know what gave you the idea to do that then. So I'll, I'll tell you that there's another story attached to this one. When I wrote my first book in 2010, um, a very, very, very dear friend who was uh, the, the 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 chief minister of one of the major states in our country. Uh, I asked him to come and um, release the book, so he came and very kindly released the book, uh, and it got a very wide publicity and so on. So I asked uh, uh, a very senior journalist friend. I said, "Will you give me a nice write up tomorrow?" And he looks at me and he says, "Who's Ashutosh Garg?" So I said, what do you mean, who's Ashutosh Garg? You've known me for the last 20 years. He says, no, I've known Ashutosh Garg, comma, India Tobacco or ITC Limited. I've known Ashutosh Garg, comma, so-and-so aerospace company. I've known Ashutosh Garg, comma, Guardian Pharmacy. Who's Ashutosh Garg? That is for the first time I started to understand that we tend to believe that we are larger than life and we forget that when we send our business card in for a meeting, 90% of our meeting is because of the organization we represent and not because who we are. Wow. And that is for the first time I started to understand how important it was to invest in my own name because that's the only name 
that uh, is mine. It is my personal brand. Uh, and it's got all, uh, you know, it's got, it, you know, it, it, my, 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 my gene pool is attached to my brand. My identity is attached to my brand. And that stays with me. So it's very necessary and very important for each one of us to understand how critical it is to invest in our own name and to make sure that it's the only legacy that we will leave behind. And therefore, what is uh, what is it that we really want to build this name into? And I've also often said, and I've spoken at many conferences, that most of us, most of us common individuals, uh, will have our name or our legacy last for three generations. I will know who my grandfather is, but my sons cannot be expected to know who my grandfather is. Right. Right. Unless, you know, unless you are a name like, uh, uh, you know, Steve Jobs or a Bill Gates or something, they will be remembered for posterity. Most of us will be forgotten. So what can we do to build our own personal brand? And that is why I wrote this book. Interesting. And of course, you have legacies left behind through your books and now through digital digital goes on yeah. and on and on mm -hmm. and the podcast obviously i just found it interesting because you were talking about someone's uniqueness and that they are there's only that person what what we like to say is only you are you mm -hmm. and there's only one of you and Correct. and you're responsible for your brand making it either good or bad you were talking about unique, being unique and these kinds of things long before people were even aware that, I mean, I think there was an awareness of personal branding at the highest levels where mm. you have a PR team and, but people didn't think about that in their everyday life. Correct. Correct. And I think that, you know, people are realizing this more because, you know, when you talk of people of my vintage, you know, there wasn't this entire digital world uh, surrounding us that we have all been now en you know, enveloped by. And the younger people are suddenly beginning to understand that whatever they say or do, uh, the trail remains forever. It's true. And people are now beginning to understand that, you know, for example, in India, if you apply for a US visa, then uh, you have to uh, give all your social media accounts. Because someone is going to check uh, what you have been saying, you know, uh, what kind of uh, think thought processes are you uh, exhibiting? Employers have started to you know look at LinkedIn and using artificial intelligence to uh, check out everything that you have said on different platforms. So now it's becoming increasingly important for you to be conscious of uh, who you are and what are you saying, because one negative uh, can do some serious damage to uh, your own credibility. Yeah, and I think there's a whole generation of older millennials that um, will be scrambling to try and Correct. delete some posts that that they have. And, and, and nothing ever gets deleted. No, no, it's still always around somewhere. Yeah. Correct. I mean, people just have to be con conscious of what people are saying. And, you know, I don't think anyone objects to your, uh, you know, taking a photograph of your food and putting it out on social media. Exactly. But if you are saying anything that is knowingly going to harm somebody else, then that will certainly, you know, stay and impact you when you are going to look for, uh, you know, something for yourself. Yeah. Best always to stay away from, for in my opinion, politics, religion. Yeah. And anything any negativity that affects diversity, inclusion, and equity. Correct. Correct. You were so passionate about this book that you actually, that's what you called your podcast. Was Correct. Called you. Correct. Because I just said that, you know, we've often heard this story or this line that everyone has a book inside them. Uh, I think everyone has an amazing story that we can uh, share and we can listen to. So there is some things everyone can add exactly. to, uh, to each one of us. And it's brilliant because you send out a questionnaire before 
so that people actually almost start to go through that journey of yeah. self-discovery before they even talk to you. Correct. Correct. That's what I found fascinating about Correct. when you interviewed me. It's yeah. like and, and one of the, the reason I send this out is because you know I established two or three norms for myself when I started the podcast. I said number one, I want to make sure that whatever I record today should be as relevant today as it will be five years from now. So therefore, I don't get into any numbers. I don't get, get into any dates, et cetera. Yeah. Number two, I said that I don't want to get into any politics. Uh, so therefore, I stay away from political discussions. And I also stay away from political leaders uh, who I don't want to interview. Good idea. And and the third thing I say was that uh, my podcast is to create a mass, you know, massive database of knowledge, experience, and wisdom. And therefore, there must be no surprises for my guest. I give them uh, enough time for questions. And I also tell them that if you want me to delete something, let me know. Yeah. Yeah. And But what I found fascinating is some of the questions you asked made me think about, you know, what were the lessons I took away from that? Mm -hmm. You know, and what did I learn? And then obviously... I realize it's because that's really what you want to share. So what is, mm. what was my journey? What was different? What did I learn? And right. what do I know that I can impart on the people watching, mm. watching the podcast? Absolutely. So it was, it was very uh, thoughtful. And um, I listen, your podcast is over 2,500 episodes. So mm -hmm. you're doing something right. Must be because we get about 150,000 views and listens every day. Yeah. So the numbers are growing uh, and uh, we normally have about 80 to 85 people uh, booked at any one point of time. So I'm fully booked up to well, the first week of June. Which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Which is amazing. So Ash, you have a lot of books. You have, uh, as we said, nine. Um, are all of them based on a point in your life where you were going through a bit of self-discovery? Yes and no. Uh, you know, I have written um, all my life, uh, you know, from the time I was 10 or 12 years ago when I used to write letters to the editor of uh, magazines and newspapers to uh, when I started working, I had my own column in the business magazines uh, and then I was writing for the newspapers and so on. Um so, you know, I, I write because I'm passionate about writing. And uh, I just find myself being able to express much better when I write. Right. So my first book was uh, more like uh, uh, in, in an, an autobiographical journey from being a manager to an entrepreneur, uh, or as uh, uh, YPO speak would say, from being a hired gun to an entrepreneur, right. uh, to... Uh, uh, you know, I've written books on, uh, I've got two fiction books, uh, which are being reviewed to be made into web series. Uh, I've written uh, a book on retirement. Uh, and the reason I wrote on retirement was because I said that, uh, and a lot of these are experiential, you know, uh, in, in India, uh, retirement is considered to be a, a word that you don't talk about. Unlike in your part of the world, when you uh, want to retire, if you ask uh, someone from India or the Indian subcontinent or, or, or Asia, what are you going to do when you retire? The first response you'll get is, I'll cross that bridge when I reach it. And then, then they don't plan. It's not money-wise. Financially, they're well off. It's how are you going to manage the incredible amount of free time that you will have? So I wrote a book on retirement, which is titled Reinvent, Reboot, Rewire, Managing Retirement in the 21st Century. Then I wrote a book on uh, what we just spoke about, personal branding. Uh, then I wrote a book on failure. Uh, and again, a very Asian uh, view, but I think it's now common with almost all parents around the world. Most parents don't teach children it's okay to fail. Uh, in, you know, uh, in Asia more particularly, we are always taught to come first in class, go to the head of the line, etc. And... Uh, it does a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it certainly gets a lot of kids and, and parents thinking on what should be done. So my book was on failure. Then I wrote this book when I wanted to learn a little bit about scriptures. 
And now I'm working on a very, very interesting book. It should be, I should finish it maybe in about seven, eight months. And this book is, the working title is Lessons from a Father. So you will notice that I have, you know, I write on, I don't have any particular uh, subject that I write about. I write about whatever I feel like writing. Which is amazing. And I'm sure there are many, many lessons from a father. That, Absolutely. And, it and again, be- see, uh, you know, Leanne, the, the hypothesis and has always been that uh, mothers play a very major role in the lives of children. And there is no uh, denying that or underscoring that. Somehow, while fathers play a role, it, their role globally has been more to be as providers and as people who are generally in the background. So I said, I have, my father was my best, was my best friend till he passed away. And uh, I have amazing lessons. So I've started speaking to many friends from around the world and saying, tell me what you have learned from your father and what have you passed on to your children as a father. So right now I'm collecting data. That's interesting. Do you find that it's mostly men that have certain important no. things to learn from their no. father or no. women, women also? Women learn a lot from fathers. And, and, and it's it's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere in the world, we know that there is always a very special bond between daughters and fathers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I've spoken to many women, many friends, and they have, they're coming, they're coming up with such, such amazing, small, small lessons. So I'll give you one example of uh, what my father used to always tell us. And he was a, a very highly decorated army brigadier general. Uh, and he would always say that every morning when you are standing in front of the mirror shaving, uh, and he would use shaving because we were three three boys and no girls in the family. But he would say, when you're shaving, if you can look yourself in the eye and say, yesterday I knowingly did not harm anybody or do anything wrong, that's the only justification you need to give to anybody in life. Nice. Now, that's a very powerful statement to make. And I think yes. I've lived by that all, all along. It's amazing some of the things we learn from our parents that stay Correct. with us our entire lives. Correct. You know, um, I because obviously when you when you say that about fathers and daughters, I don't know how many times my dad. I, I had a ton of lessons from my mom. Mm-hmm. My dad said one thing to me that kind of blew me away, and it wasn't until I was in my twenties, and I was a bit upset because there was somebody at work that I worked with that. Mm-hmm was giving me a bit of a hard time about everything. Mm -hmm. And I said to my dad, like, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why she doesn't like me. Like I've never Mm. done anything to her. Mm. And he said, darling, you have to understand that you can be the sweetest, juiciest peach, but there are some people that just don't like peaches. Absolutely. Mm. And I I thought, you know, on the surface, that sounds really... But when you start to think about that, it's like, yeah. wow, yeah, okay. You just said a lot with those few Correct. words. Correct. And Correct. I Correct. think about that all the time. Absolutely. My mom used to say, if it's meant to be, it will be. Correct. What will be, will be. Yeah. So if it's meant for you, it's, it will get to you. If it's not meant Absolutely. for you, so... Don't stress about it because mm. if it, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Yeah. So th- those are the two major ones. And so I could see how the compilation would be really interesting for people mm. because they would all feel as if they were involved in yeah. your book. Yeah. What a fabulous idea. <laughs> Thank you. And you have such a database of people that you can talk to. Absolutely. YPO. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Ash, I can't believe we're out of time already, but mm-hmm. I wanted to ask one question that I always ask. You have your own late night talk show. Mm-hmm. Who would be your first guest, dead or alive? Well, you know, I've had some amazing set of people, so I'm not sure if I can pick anyone uh, individually, but if I had a choice, I love my golf and I would love to speak to Tiger Woods. Really? So you're very passionate about golf. I play golf three or four times a week. Nice. Nice. See, I didn't know that. So it just taught (laughs) me something about you. Mm -hmm. 
Ash, thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's been such thank a pleasure. And thank again, you. have all of the information in the description if people want to click there or you can be found in the podcast under the brand called you and Ash is everywhere. So just thank you so much. And you can find him. Thank you for inviting me. And I really enjoyed my conversation with you. Thanks, Ash. Thank you, Leanne.